Hello, my wonderful spirit guides. Today, I'm actually going to be reacting to Cruel Youth 30MG. Um, I'm very much looking forward to it, and I've been wanting to react to this for a while now, and I'm actually finally doing it, which is, <laughs> I was meant to do it like a week ago, well, a couple weeks, I don't know, I was meant to do it last year, I think. But anyway, I'm doing it now, and I'm very much excited for it. It's only 25 minutes long, which is crazy. But yeah, if you want to see it uncut, then please do come over to Patreon and you can see lots of videos uncut there. Um, I have five tiers, so take your pick and they all have different benefits and so on. If you'd like to send me a tip, I do have a PayPal link in the description too. Um, I will never say no to a tip. Thank you very much if you give me one. If you can't do any of those things, don't worry at all. Just like, comment, subscribe if you like the video. Um, follow me on Instagram, I shall follow you back. And Join the Discord to talk to like-minded people about my videos, about music, whatever you want to do. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. First one is called Everything Was Beautiful. Let me get her lyrics up too. All right, let's go. I'm already reading the verse and I've got a good idea about what that's about. I love it. <laughs> Instantly. It's got such a, I don't know, grayscale tone to it. With a bit of bronze. Boy. Wow. It's almost got that like kind of dreamy like feeling that opiates give you. Mm, but that like growly bass that comes in. But then this bit's like the dream state of it all. Oh! Ooh, it's like glistening sounds. dark isn't it was yeah super dark yeah and interestingly of course like as many of you will know by now i came off uh, my medication last year um opiate medication and i was on it for two and a half years and got myself hooked and messed around with it a little bit you know so i went cold turkey and it was hell <laughs> yeah hell okay Truly hell. I'm over it now and I, I'm actually able to listen to this and everything. I don't know, it's just kind of crazy. But of course this isn't about uh, pain pills. This uh, apparently is about... Okay, this is a sample from the fifth track on Cruel Use 30 MG EP titled Florida Blues. The reference substances are most likely crack. Yeah, you, you get it, crack. <laughs> Drug that she mentions multiple times throughout the EP. Crack is made by cooking typical Coca-Cola with baking soda and is then broken down into smokable rocks. Regular Coca-Cola can also be cut and put into lines that can then be inhaled. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, interesting. Here we go. I wonder why it's called 30 MG though. It's funny because like the, the medication I was on was literally 30 MG. <laughs> Oh God, no. well, not when I was taking it. It was a lot more than that. The amount I took. We won't go into it. <laughs> the song incorporates a voicemail by Teddy to an unknown recipient, foreshadowing the events that take place in Paris, France, sung in a song that follows Alexis Texas. Isn't Alexis Texas a P-O-R-N star? Anyway... I don't know why I'd know that. I think it's just back from the college days and boys would talk about her. I don't know. Gross. I <laughs> don't even think about. But anyway, not her, but like, you know, all the boys been like, yeah, watch this taxes. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's listen to it. Yeah, it is a popular name. Uh, no, the name of a popular P-O-R-N actress. Yeah. 
You know, uh. I love her voice. This is amazing. I love it so much. Oh my god, it's so good. Mm. I wonder why it's called Alexis Texas. I do love a dark, gritty feeling though. Wow. Okay. I am actually going to go into the lyrics a little bit because I'm kind of interested. Oh, I mean, I, I really got them as I was reading them along the way, but I don't know. I just think it'd be fun to have a little look. Oh, I'm, think. I'm all hooked up, guys. I'm all hooked up. As in, my wires are crossed. <laughs> Not that type of hookup. All right, anyway. Ugh, my hair keeps... Like, why is it that hair is so attracted to the lips? You know? It's like it's like... <laughs> trying to creep onto me. Like a big old creep. Get off me, you creep. All right, anyway. I'm knocking everything over. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't show you my makeup. I did this in a video just now, but... I kind of like it. Do you know what? It didn't take me that long either. The lipstick's a little bit wild, but... And loving the eyeballs. Right, anyway, Alexis Texas. Yes, she is a adult filmmaker. I couldn't think of the word then. Right, anyway, you make me want to take off all my clothes. You make me want to show you where that thing goes. You make me want to dive into all that snow. You make me stay out all night and catch a cold. Well, we know what snow means with what we've already talked about with the old Coca-Cola. Yeah, that's what she wants to do. She wants to dive in and have a good old night. And then, all right, this is something I really want to say. When she goes, rich, and, it, and the ch bit carries on into it, it almost sounds like an instrument, like a, you know, like a fun little instrument-y bit in the production, which is cool. But it, it, And it's like nice because she's like, rich. I don't know, it just really works. Anyway, never felt so sweet, never ride no skis like this before. Again, skiing, you know, is another kind of, um, what do you call it? Innuendo? Dublin Tondra? Never been effed up, never lined it up like this before. Never felt so sweet, you pass a key, unlock my heart. Another way, doing it on keys is another way of doing it. Don't know who you are, but I love you on that Escobar. And obviously Pablo Escobar of course, and who was, uh, as it says here, an infamous Colombian D-Lord. <laughs> D-Lord, that sounds so funny. Um, and a narco-terrorist who monopolised the cola trade in the USA. I don't know how much I say on YouTube, so just forgive me for the code words. And then um, she goes, powder my nose, I'm going out tonight, powder my nose, an absolute another double entendre, like innuendo, I don't know, I can't think of what it is. I think it's double entendre, like it has two meanings, but I don't think it has two meanings, I think it's an, an innu innuendo, because isn't innuendo something that is referring to something 
by saying something else. Like basically, it's like code word in itself, isn't it? Anyway, don't worry about that. Um, yeah, I, I don't really need to go into every lyric, to be honest. We know what it's about. I, I love the... And then it goes... I love that. I don't know why, but it gave me, like, um, I don't know. I read some called Mako or Mako. I can't, I don't know how to, I think it's Mako. Anyway, um, that was a Patreon request, which was awesome. And um, it gave me a similar feeling um, when it did those little high bits. That was really cool. I really liked that. Um, here, though, in the bridge, I'm a bring a white girl, always do it right girl. Like, what does that mean? Oh, the white girl she's talking about bringing is the, the powders. Yes, <laughs> I was going to say, like, that's really random. But, yeah, I wonder why it said Alexis Texas in it, though. I guess uh, I'll be told here. It's about one of the first few dates my husband took me on. He said we were going dancing, so I got all dolled up, and we jumped in a taxi, and a few moments later we pulled up at, a, at the Eurostar train station. He never mentioned his favourite club was in Paris. That whole weekend was, well... I don't remember most of it, but I couldn't tell if we were in Paris or in heaven. Afterward, I had a headache that lasted at least two weeks, but it was well worth it. A few months later, we got married. Okay, so a bit of a wild date, um, but it ended in a marriage. You know, that could have gone quite wrong with all of the, those things flying around, substances and stuff, but uh, I guess it went quite right for them. Next song is called Mr. Watson. I don't need money. Oh, it's that fifties kind of I feeling. Need, I just wish my man would go home. When it's just you and me. Tired of people mm -hmm. asking what I do when I'm alone. But September comes and they fall like leaves. Oh, what would I do without you? Oh, Mr. Watson. I've been cheating you. I love that trap beat. What is this? Still trying to get to my lips. Wow. It's powder blue. Oh, her voice. kind of got a lot of meaning. Interesting. Okay, yeah, I want to look into this. It says here, Mr. Watson is a reference to prescription pills manufactured by Watson Phar Pharmaceuticals, which often come in powder blue colour and are embossed with Watson. The company makes several types of narcotics and benzodiazepines that are often abused, including hydrocodone, hydrocodone. Uh, picture below... Triggering? No, I'm, I'm literally, it's not triggering. Don't worry. <laughs> Don't worry. Like, I literally feel so empowered now after um, going through the whole addiction thing. Yeah, I might get triggered sometimes when I'm out on a low day. Not triggered, sorry. I might crave it sometimes on a low day. No, not a physical craving, a mental craving. I'm over the physical craving now, which is fantastic. 
but I can't tell you how much sweeter my life is without it. So it's really hard. You know, when, when I'm having a bad day, of course, my life is less than great. So that's when I think about it. But when I'm doing well and it's better than I felt when I was on it, then I, there's, I can't, it doesn't trigger me because it's like, nah, I, I like, I just look at it like, thank God I'm not on that. I feel like almost like proud or like, I'm like, yeah, I don't do that. <laughs> I don't even do that anymore. So, <laughs> you know, I've got like a little bit of an arrogance about it in a way, but in a nice way, it's like an empowering way. Right, anyway. Addicts often use benzos to cheat on sobriety, <laughs> rationalizing that they help calm and relax them and reduce the cravings for harder drugs. They are also rational they also rationalize that they're not violating their sobriety because they aren't using the drug they were originally addicted to, so it's not technically a relapse. Well, it definitely is. <laughs> it definitely is. But um and like, you know, I like I said, I do have days where I want to just like go for it and uh just be whacked out my mind. <laughs> but I have to find healthy ways to cope with that. And that has been, you know, just keeping busy doing these videos, been doing Pilates in the mornings. That gives me such a nice fucking feeling. John, that's a high in itself. Because it's not like cardio where you feel like Ugh, afterwards. It's more and it's a lot of breathing involved. So you do get like a kind of like a rush and a buzz. Oh, feels so good. It gives me more energy throughout the day so nice um i'm always going to be an addict to dopamine trust me <laughs> i definitely am i need it i need it but um yeah it, it's just you don't have to get that for a drug you just don't um i'm not saying i don't have my vices though i do but it luckily they're not ones like this anyway yeah so she is just basically saying like she just loves it so much you know love you my babe and I love you more than anything but I do want to see this bit you know they call their parents move back home go to church and pray for the sad sad girl it is common practice for those who are suffering from addiction to have their parents take care of them during recovery I kind of just did it myself I wouldn't have wanted that though I wouldn't have wanted to like uh, well my partner helped a little bit like with getting food and helping but no one can really help help um, I just did it. I, it, it was, it's confusing. <laughs> it's confusing. I'm not saying there wasn't any support. I'm just saying, whatever. Because those parents worry for their children, they often speak, seek refuge in their faith by pleading with the higher power in order to rescue their child. Yeah. Interesting. It is interesting how, like, obviously, all the songs really are fitting the title in such an obvious way. I do kind of like that. It really is, like, an album about addiction and not just addiction but uh you know substances and having fun with them as well I guess but yeah all the different shades of what they're like and what they can do I wonder if she's if she, like these are well, well they are true to her but I wonder if she's okay you know Cruel Youth is a musical love child created during a three-month lock-in at my studio of my husband Willie Moon it's the Ronette on Oxy. It's a narcotic lullaby, a psychedelic jingle you might hear waiting in a line at the Western Union or a laptop symphony soundtracking a car crash in slow motion. Willie and I met whilst both signed to Universal Records and married only a few months later. Coral Youth is an intravenous hit of our love and everything I find beautiful. For a brief moment in 2015 I felt like it was the death of me but somehow the part that survived was a pure uncensored passion that quickly became the ace in my hand. While evolving my solo project into my new band, I was approached to be personality on X Factor New Zealand, which led to a publicity stunt resulting in a viral media storm. I was subjected to global a global witch hunt. I couldn't defend myself against due to a wide reaching legal gagging order. It was a truly regrettable situation for everyone involved and Willie and I flew back to our home in New York where I threw myself headfirst into songwriting. Days later I was collaborating with Madonna on her number one album Red Bull Heart, co-writing the song Holy Water. I was drafted onto Rihanna's writing team, spending months travelling the world with her and do you know what, I was about to say this song uh, weirdly, like it didn't remind me of Rihanna like at all but there was certain tones in her voice that reminded me of Rihanna. 
I was drafted on to Rihanna's writing team, spending months traveling the world with her and ultimately co-writing Kiss It Better on her worldwide number one album, Anti. While working with such tenacious and outspoken artists, I found a sanctuary where I was allowed to sing the unspeakable. No frills, no fakery. All fun, games, whiskey and a microphone. With the occasional drop-in from friends, writers and producers who added their own take on our world. To my friends, followers and everyone that has supported me during this transitional time, I'm excited to share this new music with you. This is our song, Mr. Watson. Watson, this is Cruel Youth, Love, Teddy Sinclair. And that's something that she'd written on... Uh, Instagram but yeah I hope she's all right because like well this is quite a few years ago now but like I and mean, I guess you know being young you do all sorts of things don't you but yeah you definitely don't want to get addicted to this stuff you really don't you really don't it's really pointless <laughs> truly it's whatever you can find joy in other things and much better things truly right anyway next one was called I don't love you <laughs> Again, doing that like doo -doo -doo -doo. stop, repeat. Yes, I like. Don't think about you all the time. Switch blade words and aim to clear your sweet delusion. I confess that I got hurt. Champagne, pirouettes, and bathroom trips. Where were you when we were getting high? Where I we love the way that when sounds. I thought I'd die. She feels kind of classic. I don't love you. Wow. Sounds gorgeous. Again with that like hip hop kind of 808 drum. Mmm, fun. Feels like it could really break into something big, doesn't it? But it never does. It's like a teaser. God, I wonder what the bridge is gonna be like. Surprise, yeah, again, yeah. Liquor, your no surprise, you again. Again, it's gonna be a Natalia Kills feeling with the, the cheerleader feel almost. Like a fucking Picasso. Picasso. Where's that from? Like Manchester or Scouse, is it? Liverpool? Gonk, you piece of shite. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, I Don't Love You expresses Teddy's apathy towards someone who she claims to no longer love, whether it's due to circumstance or just a change of heart. She has no feelings for them, both romantically or platonically. Okay. But there was definitely more to it than that. Yeah, I think it was Manchester, by the way. Yeah, you piece of shite. Right, anyway, <laughs> don't worry. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Interesting song, though. It feels like a personal song. Where were you when we were getting high? When, where were you when I thought I died? Throw out your liquor, amen. No time for you in my bed. That's interesting. Like, maybe they gave up, like, doing all the drugs and alcohol or something and then kind of left her you know, and she was just on her own and like, you know, she almost died or whatever. And yeah, I don't know, but she's, she's angry at them basically. Hmm. Who knows? But anyway, yeah, I'm going to move on. Next one was called Florida Blues. <laughs> Yeah. 
instruments. It really does have like a summery feel, but again, it does feel trippy. Daytime drinking, daytime smoking, you know? Oh my god, white lightning. The cheapest cider. like that one actually that had like a that I could vibe that on it you know it had like that real you know when she was talking about oh I want this album to make you feel like you're basically high I don't know how well this video is going to do on YouTube with all the talk of this sort of stuff but <laughs> we'll see yeah that one really gave me that feeling of like summer um and walking around like normal places though like shops and stuff but feeling a little bit high something I used to be all the time actually <laughs> something I would do on a daily but um yeah it gave me that feeling um who needs to take it when you can just listen to this if you want to feel like that whatever Florida Blues is Teddy's vivid description of being under the influence the outro detailing different ways to ingest is sampled in the opening track yeah yeah we know we already know that because I already said it so you don't need to tell me again god <laughs> Yeah, I absolutely love the feeling though. And I like the lyrics too. I, I mean, her lyrics are just great anyway. But anyway, moving on, we are now onto the song called Hate F. Let's go. I wonder if this one's gonna have like a kind of sexy sound. You know, like kind of dark as well. I don't know, maybe it's got actually a classic sound again. That 50s feeling that she goes for. Coming in with the big guns, the big vocals. the truth man Wow. 
This is a heartbreaking song. So real though. And I never learn. These lyrics are amazing. Our fire never burns. Wow, she's such a good lyricist. When she's saying when we we are and she's talking about girls in general that's how i interpret it it's like kind of really sad actually and it's so true and, and relatable when you're when you're a young woman or, or a young boy it doesn't really matter which way it goes but like for i'll just go off being a woman you know when you're a young girl you are you're very much like thinking you know men want to do these intimate acts so you think well, I'll do it because I want them to like me. But it doesn't actually end up being that way. But And you end up doing things you don't, you know, even if you don't want to do it, you, you do it because, like, you're insecure. You're literally young and insecure. It just says it all in this um, <clears throat> song and how she's, like, wants more from him, but she's not going to get it, basically. It's just really sad. But I like the line when it was like, I don't even know you and you don't know me when I'm not high. It's like that kind of booty call situation when she's out with her friends and she's, uh, you know, drunk or high or whatever. Like, she'll go and do silly things, you know, and go meet up with this guy and get down and dirty and um, regret it. And then he is someone who's probably sleeping with a lot of people as it comes, as you come to find out in the bridge as well. Um, and it, it's never a nice feeling. Yeah, I, I just think it's quite simple. I don't need to talk about it too much. Like, it's very easy to understand. But I absolutely love that one. Really good. Especially the lyrics and the storytelling of that one. I really liked it for those reasons. Big time. And the music was amazing too, of course. Right, anyway, last song now. And it's called Diamond Days. <laughs> feeling than I thought it went in the chorus. And I would be a fool to carry on. That's really cool. I don't like this bit sounding so joyous. Like a Christmas song. I know it, I don't know. It lacks intensity. Nice. 
I can imagine it going, the diamond days are dying, da 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 and I would be a fool to carry on. You know, I can imagine it having that theatrical twist rather than this like, da 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 I don't know, I guess it's meant to have that sound to it, but I actually would have liked it if it did what I imagined, okay? <laughs> Even though, I, uh, that's not to say I didn't like the songs, I really did. I do want to look into it a bit, I really do. Like, what's she on about? What is she on about? Diamond Days is the first official single for band Cruel Youth. The band members include Teddy Sinclair with the previous moniker Natalia Kills alongside her husband. Okay, but that's not... That's all you're going to give me. That's all you're going to say. Huh? Oh, my God. The comments on Genius is like, dope. And then someone said, dope times two. That's dope. And it's gone dope to time date. <laughs> like, all different comments. So, we don't need fancy drinks and penthouse suites to run a riot. She's saying that they do not need to her to be rich to have fun. They create their own fun. And we've heard her say that before, I think, in a Natalia Kills album. And you were, and you, you were just a fling, a beautiful addition to the valley of my vices. She was saying that she had an affair or a one night stand with someone which made a beautiful addition to her bed, bad behaviour. Bed behaviour, I know he said. Well, <laughs> which, the which the character she is portraying enjoys messing around. The song is titled Diamond Days, which then talks about in the chorus that her perfect days are over, perfect relationships are over which can be further hinted with her 2011 album Perfectionist, where she put the past behind her, even changing her stage name from Natalia Kills and name legally after controversy her and her husband got into. She's no longer a perfectionist and wants to live her life without restraints. Yes. And then she says, we're different people, Adam and Evil, calling herself evil. Interesting. But Sal, I don't want her to call herself evil. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, it says, in the Christian faith, Adam was the firstborn of all creation, pure and sinless. Evil is the exact opposite of Adam. Teddy is saying that she and her man are the, are this different from each other. It is also a play on the name of Adam's wife, Eve, who was tricked by the serpent and caused Adam to sin. They were literally made for each other, but were the ruin of humanity. That is what Teddy is talking about in the song. She and her man had an inspired relationship but they were ultimately too different to be together. That's interesting because like me and my partner are, oh, oh God, we couldn't be more different. We do have like similar interests, like video games and nature programs <laughs> and like, you know, different activities, like going out and doing fun things together and whatever, but we are quite different. I'm, I'm very like, I've got the riz. <laughs> yes, I know all about that word now, the old riz. My friend told me it the other day. And I was like, what are you on about? I'm like, yeah, there is. It means charisma. And I was like, stop it. And I was like, got the old rizzle dizzle, razzle dazzle, rizzle dizzle. Oh my God, it was just silly. But anyway, I've got the riz, mate. I do. Self-proclaimed riz. <laughs> and like, my partner's a lot more quiet. A bit introvert. I am introvert though as well. I'm, I'm an ex in extroverted in in instrument. <laughs> I'm an extroverted introvert, I would say. But anyway, yeah. You smile at sunrise, I long for a landslide. Like, I, I just love that. Like, you smile at beautiful things like a sunrise. You feel the joy and positivity in life. Whereas I long for chaos and destruction because it's all I've ever freaking known, basically. And then the diamond days are done. The best days of this relationship are over and it would be prolonging the inevitable to stay in it, of course. And she says, no, there's nothing wrong, but I'm already gone. She's just like, the spark's gone. It's nothing terrible happened. She just was like, ugh. It's just not for me and you. Not for not for me. I'm sorry. But yeah, I'm not gonna go into every nook and cranny. I just wanted to see what it was about, mainly. But yeah, that was an awesome album. I, I don't know which one I like the most out of the songs, because like oh, I don't know. Oh Alexis Texas was cool for that like kind of just like cool, grittier vibe, I guess. Um but Mr. Watson was awesome. Hate F was really like a story I like that. I don't I do not, I really did like all of them. I did. I really did. I just love like what it is like in colouring for me is like the the base colours are like this uh grayscale sort of thing, very black and white, weird like grayscale. Yeah, grayscale, and then like you'll get a song like in um what which one was it? Florida Blues? Is that the one the which one was the summary one? 
think it might have been Florida Blues. I loved that one if it was that one. Anyway, it had like little sparks of yellow in there, which was interesting. So it was like black and white with little like <laughs> beams of yellow, like little like st like strings of yellow that came in. That was cool. Um, but yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. It's really nice visually as well. I'll show this to my friend because um, every time I've shown her a cool you song, she's gone, I love it. So I'm going to show this to her and hopefully she'll like it. But anyway, yes. Hope you enjoyed and I shall see you next time. Bye.